Hello friends, for today's video I wanted to go through a list of some short fantasy works. Before I jump into my list, feel free in the comments down below to give your recommendations. They can be books that are novella length, they just have a shorter page length in general, maybe are really accessible, or maybe they're not the most accessible but they do have a shorter page count. Whatever the case may be, feel free to leave your recommendations, that way anybody who comes to this video doesn't just have the ones that I mentioned but yours as well. And then if when I go through these, you find that your interest is peaked and you want to check any of them out, I will have all of them in the description bar as well as a list of other works that are also on the shorter side, some of which are fantasy, some of which go into other genres so that if you are looking to dip your toes and branch out, you have those additional ones as well. But jumping into today's list, we're going to start with Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. This is a story that follows a young woman who early in her life her family, something terrible happened to them as a result of these beasts that roam the land. And the only way really to combat these beasts are these hunters that hunt alongside these massive birds known as rocks. And so our main character, after experiencing something very traumatic in her youth, decides that she wants to become one of these hunters. And you follow her journey as she is not only persevering toward this goal, but also as she is developing a bond of her own with one of these rocks. I did feel, and I say this every time that I mention this story, that it, it came across so incredibly cinematic. I actually think that the shorter page count and this still sort of sweeping story, despite the fact that it's shorter, played a role in that. I also feel the way that Fonda Lee captured the setting, which just feels like you're within these vast mountain ranges and that there could be this beast around any corner. Something about that just felt like watching a movie and having all of this unfold on the screen. I really enjoyed it. I do think that it's interesting because it does cover a large portion of the character's life. It might lead you to believe that you don't actually get that connected to her story, but I do feel like it covers the story in pacing wise a similar fashion to how movies do. So if you're a movie goer and you personally love a story that feels relatively contained to a certain small group or single character, but that still covers a large portion of that character's life, then I think a Untethered Sky is a good one to check out. After that we have The Crane Husband. This one is very different in that it barely even, I think, can be considered fantasy. It almost feels more like a fable, and that's very much, I think, due to the fact that this is a retelling, and you are following this young teenage girl whose mother one day brings home a giant crane. And that's the primary fantasy element to this. There's not necessarily a magic system or anything like that, or these interesting politics to get into. Rather, it's just looking at this young girl as her home life is being destroyed by what is basically this destructive force in the form of this massive crane. You see the way that the crane slowly starts to harm the mother and how it also impacts our main character's little brother as well and her additionally. But because the mother is not really capable of taking care of her children at this point, that burden falls on the main character and a lot of the story is symbolic of what it's like to be within an abusive home. It's definitely a difficult read, but I think it's one that really helps create a setting that allows you, the reader, to have a better understanding, one, if you've never experienced that, what that's like, especially for children who are doing their best to take care of themselves, and if they have siblings, their siblings additionally, and if you've experienced something similar, I think that the way it's written, it makes it so that you're able to process the story in a way that almost feels cathartic in a sense. I think it's incredibly powerful. It is a little bit strange, as I'm sure the premise makes clear, but I think it's actually quite powerful and extremely well done. From there, we have something that's a little bit cheerier, and that would be Half a Soul. This is part of a series of standalones, although I do recommend starting with Half a Soul, and if you enjoy it, the next couple of stories, you can kind of just sort of see glimpses of the one that you get within Half a Soul, but the setup for this is that you are in basically like a Regency era where there also happens to be magic and magical beings. Our main character is somebody who had half of her soul stolen from a magical being at a young age, and her cousin, who is so devastated by this, wants so badly to do what she can to help our main character, and so in doing so, she ends up recruiting the assistance 
of this relatively grumpy court magician-like character. He really doesn't like the upper class, we'll say, and he has a lot of criticisms about society as a whole. And in a way, our main character, by having half of her soul taken and not really always being able to discern what she's supposed to say and how she's supposed to say and how she's supposed to behave as she's saying it, in a way, he sort of sees something a lot more genuine in her. And I just think that their relationship is really darling. And I do think that even though the story, I would say, maintains its cuteness throughout, it does actually tap into some heavier themes, specifically when it comes to the way in which society is very skilled at turning their eyes away from a lot of the atrocities occur occurring in the world. Like I said, it does maintain its cuteness throughout and those things are touched on. And I think it balances them really well and it has a really precious relationship between those two main characters. After that, getting into one that is heavy on the magic, we have Emperor's Soul. This is one, I would say, of Sanderson's lesser read Cosmere works, and some people, I think, maybe find it a little intimidating because it, in some ways, feels like so many of his magic systems combined. The magic system with an Emperor Soul truly is one of the most creative and innovative magic systems. And the setup is that you follow this young woman who has been imprisoned and she makes a deal with those who have captured her to try and replicate essentially a an emperor who has gone into a coma and she is meant to do this using her magical skills as a forger. And the way that the magic works is really fascinating. It's somewhat like understanding the history of something so that you can create a forgery of it, but just understanding the history, it's so much more than just that. And our main character is extremely interesting and somewhat mysterious and how she goes about trying to have agency despite the fact that she is imprisoned, I think is really fun to explore. And it's a story that I do think that it utilizes the shorter format really fantastically. From there, we have one of my all-time favorites that I talk about all the time, and that would be Nettle and Bone. For the record, T. Kingfisher tends to write shorter works in general, so you can't really miss if you're looking for a shorter work. You can just kind of <laughs> close your eyes and, you know, throw something at the wall and you're gonna find something of hers that's short. Nettle and Bone just happens to be one of my favorites, and it is the one that I often credit for making me kind of open my eyes to the love I actually have for a lot of shorter fantasy works. I still, of course, love the longer works as well, but I just think that so many different kinds of stories exist out there, some of which are told in a shorter amount of time and some in a longer. And I think Nettle and Bone made me realize, oh yeah, some of these shorter ones are really great. And the setup for this one is that it is a grim fairy tale story where you're following this young woman whose sister has been married off to this abusive individual. However, it's significant that their kingdom maintain this alliance as they are relatively weak and this man that the sister has been married off to happens to have a very powerful army at his disposal. So if they were to somehow try and break off this relationship, then the entire kingdom would pay the price. And for obvious reasons, our main character doesn't know how to go about ensuring that her kingdom is safe and her sister is kept safe. So she decides she's gonna launch a rescue mission to try to solve this situation and she ends up recruiting a lot of very interesting people along the way, and despite the fact that the initial setup is relatively dark, I do think that in typical T. Kingfisher fashion, you do have her signature humor woven in, as well as the really quirky and fun characters. I absolutely adored this one. I do think that her humor is somewhat sort of woven in, in a way where you almost don't notice when she's starting to be funny. And once you catch on to it, I think it's just a lot of fun. Really enjoy Nettle and Bone. If you like the idea of a grim fairy tale story, especially to kind of counter something like Half a Soul, both of which have deeper themes, but I think one has outwardly a cuter appearance and the other one has a slightly more grim appearance. If you're looking for the balancing out, I think this one fits that really well. Speaking of grim though, next up we have the Witcher short stories. And I'm sure a lot of people know at this point that the series, the Witcher books series, actually starts with collections of short stories. In my opinion, the collections of short stories actually are some of my favorites 
of all of Witcher, I think Andrei Sapkowski, that is where he shines the brightest, <laughs> is within the short stories. And some of them are really wonderful and really beautiful. Some of them are really touching. And then some of them are funny. Some of them are dark. Some of them are hard to get through. But I think you have a really great mix within the two collections of short stories. In the first one, they are not told in chronological order. And so it can be kind of difficult to determine what exactly is going on. You almost go in and feel like you're missing something. But then I think once your feet are more on the ground, you're starting to have a little bit more of a connection to Geralt. Then from there, the next set of short stories, I think, end up hitting a lot harder because you're not trying to you're not trying to figure out what's going on so much. I do also think that it's easier to get into Witcher these days because we've seen so many variations of this story. So most people are at least somewhat familiar with the general setup and the character and the world. If you don't know though, we follow a monster hunter named Geralt who, because it is his profession, he does have to charge people when he helps protect them from monsters. However, in doing this, people see him as monstrous because of the fact that he doesn't just help people out of the goodness of his heart. And a lot of the moral questions boil down to, in this story, who are actually the monsters? Some of which you see are obviously these creatures that are wreaking havoc, but are they wreaking havoc simply because they have more animal-like instincts, and so they're just somewhat unaware. Then you have human beings who are oftentimes the most monstrous of all, and then sometimes you have something in the middle where you have a person who has been cursed, something to that effect, and they ultimately are not evil, but the curses that are placed on them cause them to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do. And Geralt, his job is simply to protect people from these beasts and so he has to grapple with the morality of this as do you the reader there's also a lot of additional factors with the fact that the setting is very much centered in this war-torn land and you're seeing different factions go head to head but the short stories the idea is that you're just seeing a piece of all of that and i think it is done phenomenally the short stories still to this day are some of my some of my favorites within fantasy. After that, we have the Fireborn Blade. The year that I am making this video happens to be the year that I've read this, and I definitely feel that I have talked about it a lot, so I'm sure many of you have heard about it already. But the setup for this one is you are following a disgraced knight who is looking to return to their former status, and to do this, they are making the decision to descend into a dragon's lair and try and gain this item known as the Fireborn Blade. In doing this, as they are descending into the lair, their grasp on reality is becoming more and more warped. I always say that this one is very much a genre bender of fantasy and also a little bit psychological horror. I don't want to say too much else. When I went into this, I was really surprised at how different it was because I had the impression that it was just dragon slaying fantasy, so I thought I was going to get something very familiar, but it's what the author does with that familiar foundation that turns out to be very different from a lot of what I've experienced in fantasy before, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I think that there's a good chance, especially if you are somebody that likes genre benders, that you would maybe like this one too. Next two are on the cuter side, and in comparison to a lot of the other ones I've mentioned, they also happen to be on the longer side, but they are still definitely really accessible and ultimately not that long and those two stories would be Travis Baldry's Legends and Lattes, as well as The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Legends and Lattes, I'm sure most of you know at this point because this has launched cozy fantasy into a lot of people's radars, but this is a story that follows an orc who is done with the violent life and she just kind of wants to start fresh by starting a coffee shop and you are following her through her personal stakes that she is putting into starting this business. It's very atmospheric, it is very cozy, but when things go wrong, you find yourself really caring, and I, I wasn't expecting that as much as I ended up getting, and I'm really happy because I do feel like the whole tagline of the fact that it's it's high fantasy, but with low stakes, I think perfectly captures what this has to offer. And then with the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, you are following a young woman who is a witch living in our world in modern times, but the world doesn't know that witches exist. And witches' existence happens to be relatively lonely, as there are a lot of circumstances that are often occurring when you're a witch. And so you do end up 
usually living in isolation. Our main character very much craves having some kind of relationship with other people and the opportunity arises for her to have this when she is asked to be a tutor to three young girls who also happen to be orphans who have this magic that they don't know how to control. And so she decides, okay, I'll go ahead and take up this job. And the little girls are very cute. Sometimes they're a little hesitant. Sometimes they're very sweet. And then you have the caretakers of these young orphans who are also very delightful. And it's just such a great example of found family. It's a really cute story. Highly recommend if you just need something lighter and fun and cute. And then last for today, we have The Last Tale of the Flower Bright. This is one of those stories where nobody really necessarily acts like how people actually act. So in a way, it almost feels like a fable. And the whole time you're kind of wondering, does magic exist in this world or not? <laughs> and you are sort of trying to determine that as you are following a man who ends up being essentially ensorcelled by this very mysterious woman. They get married, they have this whirlwind romance, and she has this condition within their relationship that he never asks about her past and her family. But a lot of the questions that up until now he's been able to not ask now start really bubbling at the surface because our main character has some family that is passing away and she has to go back and the man that she has married has some curiosity building as he is navigating her family home. I definitely think that this story, it has a lot of the things that you see within fairy tales and it's sort of building upon those and what I like about it is a lot of the things that you see in fairy tales are actually deeply, deeply tragic but they sort of only go surface level. Not always, of course, but some of the older stories that we hear, when you actually think about it, you're like, oh, that's really dark. <laughs> and then with that depth, within this story, what you're doing is you're actually exploring what that does to a person, how it affects them, and how trauma can really settle in and impact your entire grasp on reality. And I think in that way, it is very creative and very different. But that's it for some shorter fantasy works that if you're looking for something that you can read in a day, a weekend read, a commute read, I think all of these will fit that. As I said at the beginning, feel free to leave your recommendations in the comments, and I will have all these in the description bar down below. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later.